again. Today, we're talking about chaos. <laughs> uh, what luck in an RPG represents, and of course, how this applies to Seorsa as well. So, to start off with, the luck of the dice isn't really quite so much about representing luck in a game, oddly enough. For most RPGs, individual maneuvers and abilities aren't shown on that individual scale. They're implied as being used over a series of back and forth engagements. For something like Pathfinder, a roll to auto attack isn't actually just representing that one attack, but several attacks, parries, and defenses were the choices of the characters influence the outcome. Whether a character blocks or tries to press their advantage, and whether those match up with the opponent's own choices is not luck, it's the skill of the individual character. But that skill is represented as a factor of chaos in combat. Rather than express the individual choices, that chaos is boiled down to another kind of chaos. Luck of the dice. This does not mean that luck is equivalent to chaos. The two are distinctly different concepts, though one may be represented by the other at times in a loose approximation. In terms of something like chaos theory, the idea of chaos is that chaos is organized and structured, yet fundamentally unpredictable. We can't predict the weather to a precise degree because even the slightest, tiniest variation can quickly turn into a cascading effect where it snowballs rapidly out of control. We can get moderately close, but the further out one goes from the initial event, the more those same additional, initial tiny changes take effect and greatly alter the outcome. So, why does that matter in a role-playing game anyway? The reason it matters is that chaos is organized. It may not be predictable, but there's a range of parameters which can be reasonably understood to be the outer boundaries of what's possible. A pattern simply will emerge over time because chaos is ordered, just in such a complex way that we may not be able to perceive it on the scale of an individual event. As such, when trying to describe multiple events taking place in sequence, the roll of the dice can be used to describe chaotic events over time. However, the larger scope of what's attempted to be described, the less accurate the overall description. The smaller the scope, the less valuable dice are at describing individual events as well. Due to this, and the fact that Seorza revolves around a player's individual choices, the inevitable conclusion must be that Resorting to using dice on a regular basis to describe individual events is not an ideal method within Seorce's combat system. The act of rolling out the dice to determine and describe each individual attack is highly inappropriate for describing the chaos of combat when the very act of choosing each attack which is to be used, is the very concept of chaos. In short, Seorza doesn't use dice to determine the hit chance, the damage, the effectiveness, critical hits, and so on. Most of these things are handled via player choice, where they choose to sacrifice one for another, and the act of making this choice on both sides of the battle is where chaos is introduced. For example, let's consider the idea of a game of chess. Each side has full control over their own pieces, and yet each game plays out in a significantly different manner each time. 
There is no rolling to see if a piece takes another. No rolling for a spread pattern where the piece might move. No rolling to see how many pieces can be moved per turn. As every single action is described individually, the chaos and chess boils down to what the actions the player opposite them takes. Even though a player may think several moves ahead, planning out what they'll do if their opponent does something else in kind, that element of chaos is arrived at by their opponent performing an unexpected action, which causes the player to have to rethink the tactics they were employing, and sometimes their entire strategy on a large scale. Seorsa handles chaos in a manner more similar to chess than to something like Pathfinder, primarily due to the fact that chess describes each individual action, and in Pathfinder, each action is bundled together with into a full round attack option instead. In Pathfinder, it's perfectly reasonable to describe multiple back and forths by a roll of the dice. In Sayorsa, however, having a le level 20 legendary warrior swinging their sword and potentially missing a stationary target is ludicrous. Any remotely competent combatant will tend to swing exactly where they meant to. The chaotic element isn't whether the individual messes up such a basic action, but more so how their opponent reacts to that situation, and the choice of the attacker in the first place to aim for a leg or the center of mass. Neither of these two events are random in effect. Both are choices by the respective characters to make. And the chaotic element is the fact that these two options were chosen in the first place out of a larger list of possible choices. The place where dice come into the equation in Seorza is the point of determining how successful the interaction between the two events are. The attack chosen determines what kind of damage and or effect will take place if successful. The defense chosen determines the kind of manner in which the defender attempts to avoid getting hit. The emphasis of a defender to attempt to avoid getting tripped over getting injured is their choice as well, as they focus upon which of these is more important to them. The part which is random is whether the attacker or defender will pull ahead in the minor little reflexive actions taken. The attacker turns the arc of the swing of their mace ever so slightly to strike an enemy who's trying to dodge it. The defender twists to the left instead of the right while trying to avoid the hit. These little minute differences are where the aspect of luck of the dice come in. To describe the reflexive actions that are not entirely conscious for either attacker nor defender, they're just too small of a resolution to try to describe manually. The modifiers to the dice represent the training and the focus of an individual, such as a rogue who expends a few extra AP to increase her chance to hit by waiting for a clean opening rather than just swinging because she can't. Aiming for a more precise location, which will cause more damage but makes it harder to hit, and more likely to be defended against, is fine, but if the defender doesn't move, then the strike will hit true, and so the act of increasing damage translates specifically as an increased chance to defend against the attack. This is a subtle, yet very important difference to note. The increased chance to defend is not the same as a decreased chance to hit. If the target doesn't attempt to defend at all because they're tied up dealing with other things, then even a difficult to make hit by the attacker is going to be a clean hit. In this same vein, 
armor does not produce a reduced chance to be hit in Seorza, but rather it reduces the incoming damage. Against normal and crushing weapons, this is represented as reducing the base damage of a hit, as armor negates the impact of such, though the majority of crushing damage will simply go right through armor. For finesse weapons, this is represented as a reduced critical hit multiplier. Finesse weapons don't hit hard, they just hit vulnerable areas, so heavier armor types are better designed to have fewer weak points around the joints and such, making it less effective to strike there. This means, however, that armor will not save a character from being hit at all. It will only mitigate the effects of being hit, rather than providing full absorption of the blow in most cases. You are still simply better off trying to not get hit instead of taking the hit most of the time, unless you're willing to take a blow in order to press an advantage. This means that Seorsa very much so has a balance between offense and defense, where one directly detracts from the other. Even tanking classes, which are focused upon drawing an enemy's attacks towards themselves instead of a squishier member of their party, must balance out their offensive capabilities and their defensive, thanks in large part to the application of a streamlined threat system. It doesn't really matter if the Guardian can take the hit from an ogre and live, if that guardian doesn't annoy the ogre enough to get swung at in the first place. As such, combat in general in Seorza is still highly chaotic based upon what various characters do at any given time in response to others and in a proactive manner. Yet, because these actions are detailed out precisely, the rolling of dice to represent this chaos is simply inappropriate in most cases, and would merely bog down the game. And so, we see that just because dice are essential to describing chaos in an RPG in many situations, it doesn't mean that it should be universally applied as a crutch in any and all situations. Often, the element of chaos is quite better handled by the decisions of the individuals present. Chaos is not the same as luck, even though luck is often used to portray chaos. Comprehending this distinction is at the very core behind how Seorsa handles combat. And with that, we've more or less covered the concept of chaos and luck. See you next time!